Hello and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. That's all I have for you today, my friends. Well, we're going to start today's proceedings with a bit of an update as to what's happening with Vega. So what we have here is yet more information being revealed thanks to a Linux driver patch, and we have a report thanks to Pharonix.com that we have six new IDs associated with Vega 10. We have 0 x 6 8690x686a and so on and so forth. They're all very unexciting names and these new IDs were only referenced previously in an update to the Mac OS Mojave and GPU opens list of GFX9 parts. So what does this actually mean I hear you ask? Well most likely it is that we're going to be seeing new Vega 10 products from AMD at some point soon but it could very well be that these are very 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 far away from actually being revealed or even released because they could just be doing some testing as well. We also had however was something regarding Vega 20 as Pharonix also found a new ID 0x66a4 in addition to the five that we have seen in previous patches. So yes, this could mean that new products are on the way, it could mean they're undergoing testing, or it could actually be both. But speaking of Vega, I actually have a little bit of an update as to yesterday's topic where I discussed the Vega 2 trademark. Now one thing that Paul has been discussing lately is his source, and obviously I can't reveal who they are, who they work for, but they did have something to say regarding Vega. Now, I just hit my mic there, do forgive me for that, but on screen you will see a conversation between Paul and somebody else regarding what this source had to say. So basically what the gist of this conversation is, is that Paul's source also mentioned the possibility of a Vega for gamers, and he did say, that being the source of course, that he wasn't sure if it was still their plan, but he did believe a 7nm Vega was going to be making its way to gamers and was going to be revealed at Computext. At Computex, should I say. Now that would actually make perfect sense because as I discussed yesterday in the video when I talked about the trademark, I posed that it's you know, most likely going to be a 7nm die shrink, so it would actually make perfect sense for this to be like a gaming Vega edition 7nm Vega, and that does open up the possibility for Navi to kind of be the higher end card, and obviously Vega 2 to kind of take up that middle ground. Obviously that is pure speculation on my part, and the source did say he wasn't sure if this was still accurate, but uh, that at least was once the plan at Red AMD apparently. So yeah, it's going to be curious to see what actually happens here, but uh, I want to say keep your eyes peeled at Computex, my friends. But that is not the only AMD news I have for you today, my friends. Oh no, no, we have yet more on the Adrenaline 2019 edition, obviously that being the Radeon drivers. Now of course I have discussed this in the past, but now we have full information on what's actually happening here thanks to videocards.com who have graced us with some details from their press deck. Now this pretty much lines up with what we've heard previously, not really much of performance upgrades happening here, but we do have a bunch of new features being added. Um, we do have some improvements to Chill and Res X, but again, this update is mostly added on, uh, focused on, should I say, adding on features. So we have a Game Advisor, which quote provides game settings guidance for a personalised and improved experience, and does work in conjunction with Radeon Overlay, and it does pretty much what it says on the tin. It suggests how to improve your performance and frame rate by adjusting your settings. There's also a settings advisor for those of you who perhaps are new to the Radeon settings, so I'm you know, fiddling around with that, especially if you're new to PC gaming, that could particularly be useful. And it also recommends which features you should enable, such as FreeSync and so on, based on its guess at your performance. Now, what's also interesting to me here, however, in terms of the advisors that they do have added in, is the upgrade advisor, which is a system analyzer for, quote, minimum and recommended game compatibility. So... As to whether or not you're wondering, hey, can I run this game? It will tell you yes, no, or maybe, probably, I don't know. But regardless, it will tell you whether or not you can run 
the game. We also have auto GPU and memory overclocking, auto GPU undervolting, which I discussed last time, is one of the most interesting features. We have um, temperature dependent fan curves, memory tuning, and unlocked DPM states for RX Vega. There's a bunch of stuff for virtual super resolution, weather support 21x9, FreeSync 2. Also, we've got just more stuff added to display settings. We've got Watman, which is an in game adjustment for GPU frequency, voltage, temperature, and so on and so forth. And we also have voice control for streaming, screenshots, that sort of thing. So, hey, ready on settings. Let's start a live stream. Stuff like that, if perhaps you like that sort of thing. Um, we also have in-game replays for AMD Relive, Scene Editor, and GIF support as well. As well as a bunch of improvements for re Relive streaming with wireless streaming up to 4K60 to mobile. It's now free on Android and iOS. And we have some improvements to responsiveness and also an update to make it work alongside with AMD Link. So again, it is just packed and stuffed full of features. Do check out the videocards.com article in the description below this video. However, as I said, they are the source for this very tasty, mm, just delicious information. So what's next on from Camp AMD, I hear you ask? Well, some not so great news, unfortunately. Now what we have here is unfortunately yet another person who has jumped ship from AMD RTG to Intel. And you may recall earlier on this year, um, sorry, last year, should I say, Damien Troilat, who used to work for Hardware.fr, was hired on at Camp AMD. Now, unfortunately, according to his LinkedIn and Facebook profiles, he has actually gone over to Intel as of November the 26th, 2018, in a technical marketing position in their gaming and graphics division. So, um, a bit unfortunate there for AMD, obviously not as critical as Roger Kadori jumping ship by any means but obviously any loss to their direct competitors is one they're definitely going to feel the pinch of so yeah but I, I can't I can't blame Damien at all you know if Intel showed up at anyone's door I think you know with a, with a sack for the cash like hey you want to come work for us you're, you're probably going to say yes so yeah best of luck to him but uh, definitely a bit of an owie for, for AMD there so we're going to depart from AMD for our final topic as we have a bit of an update as to what's going on with Supermicro now, I'm sure you recall the Bloomberg article that claimed servers from companies such as Supermicro had a chip implanted on them that was obviously you know, a malicious chip, it was stealing information, all that sort of stuff, and obviously Supermicro were very keen to deny this. I have covered this a couple of times, so go check out those videos if you're at all curious as to what I'm talking about. But now we have a report from Supermicro that, according to an independent investigations firm, an outside investigations firm, no evidence has been found of any espionage chips that have been installed in its motherboards without its knowledge or permission. So this report comes to us thanks to Reuters and I would direct quote, quote here that reads, quotes computer hardware maker Supermicro Computer Inc. told customers on Tuesday that an outside investigations firm had found no evidence of any malicious hardware in its current or older model, model motherboards. In a letter to customers, the San Jose, California company said it was not surprised by the result of the review it commissioned in October after a Bloomberg article reported that spies for the Chinese government had tainted Supermicro equipment to eavesdrops on its clients. Now, according to the source of Reuters, uh, this was a global firm by the name of Nardello and Company, and they could, customers can ask for more detail on their company's findings as well. But what they actually did was test samples of motherboards and current productions and versions that were already sold to companies like Amazon and Apple, which were, as you may recall, named in Bloomberg's original article. They also looked at software and design files and did not find any unauthorized components or signals being sent out. And obviously, Supermicro now has a bunch of legal options to consider. And as I have discussed in the past, Apple and Amazon have said that they have no knowledge of any hardware attacks that have happened via any Supermicro hardware. So this is definitely going to get interesting, especially from Bloomberg, as um, Supermicro now could arguably take this to a legal step. Now that they have arguably evidence to show, nope, this did not happen. But obviously Bloomberg back in the day did claim that they did have evidence that gov uh, Chinese government officials had done this. So it's definitely going to be interesting if they choose to go that route. But for now, they have just said, look, you know, this is what has been found. And as, as, as we expected, it is nothing. So a bit of an update there for you on that particular interesting story. So... Let's be done for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Your support really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul. So thank you for giving us your time. Have a lovely day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.